Hello everybody, welcome to this mini lecture series on model selection. Okay. So what this is going to be about is the question how to select a good machine learning model for your purposes. Right? And this is not an easy choice to make. Um, oftentimes you have choices between let's say linear models, neural networks, support vector machines, so completely different types of algorithms. But even if you have decided on a specific algorithm, let's say a neural network, there are certain parameters that need to be adjusted, right? the number of weights, the number of layers, some sort of regularization parameter, and so on. So the question of model selection is present almost everywhere in machine learning, right? from principled algorithm selection to hyperparameter tuning. And so this is what we want to tackle here, and we will also go into a lot of details when it comes to the very popular lasso algorithm, but for now, we would like to start with some basic principles in this area. And so the first video is going to be about the overfitting problem and the bias variance trade-off. So let's see what this is about, right? And, and to do so, we are going to check out what learning is really about or what is at the heart of learning, and this is optimization, okay? So we have the task of selecting Q weight parameters in our model, so the weights of a neural network or the coefficients in, in our linear model, and to do so we minimize a loss function. Okay? So given a training data set of size n, we want, this is now the squared loss function, so I've decided on this, there could be some other sort of loss function, but this, this is usually similar. So the average over my training data set in the difference between what my model predicts, h of z, given my certain parameter choices, and the output y, okay? And so this is why we call this learning from examples, because I provide example inputs and corresponding outputs, and I'm adjusting the weights so that this model has the best fit in terms of my training data set. And so now let's make a thought experiment and say that the loss function given an optimal parameter value w star, so we have solved our optimization problem using gradient descent, let's say, um, that this is actually zero, right? So we're obviously very happy, this is the best thing that can happen, right? This is a non-negative function, um, so zero is obviously the best, right? No loss. Um, so the question is now, is this really learning? Right? One could say, okay, I've minimized my, my loss, so clearly I've learned something. But if you think about this, this is actually only memorizing data, okay? So what we have done is we have minimized L, which is the in-sample loss. Right? We have a sample of training data of size N, we have minimized the, what we call the in-sample loss. Right? But what we're actually after, if we talk about learning, or it's also called the empirical loss, what we actually want to have is a good behavior in terms of having a small loss out of sample, right? So on data that we have never seen before, okay? So what we want, is to minimize the weights, but now not in our sample, but the expected value when we draw our samples according to some probability distribution Okay, so the same loss, but now it's the expectation over my input data, given some distribution P, okay? And so this is what we call the out-of-sample loss. And clearly we don't have access to it, right? We do not have out-of-sample data, this is why we have the sample, right? So you see, actually, if we had the data, then this n would mean we all have the data, this is usually infinitely large, but if we had, then this would actually correspond to the mean, right? So there is a clear correspondence, 
but we want to minimize this and this is what in the end means learning, right? You have a function h that performs well out of sample. Okay. So the overall error is composed of two things, right? So, and let's, before we continue, let's consider this very simple example. You have these five points and you want to fit a model. And now the question is which type of model do you want to fit? Right? So one choice could be let's fit a constant function. So maybe you would take the mean which would minimize this loss function. Clearly not a very good model, right? Um, so maybe we have chosen too few degrees of freedom. So maybe you can try to fit a line or a parabola, right? So let's assume this parabola might look something like this. I don't know, roughly like this maybe, okay? So it clearly has a smaller, in, well, not so clear, but you can see that it has a smaller in-sample loss. And now we can take this to the extreme and say, okay, we have five points. So we have five degrees of freedom that we can fit, right? So let's fit a polynomial of order four plus the bias term. So what you might get is something like this. So in sample loss is zero, if I had drawn it better, <laughs> but in sample loss can be driven to zero. And we have this situation, but we don't know what the underlying um, function is that created the data, okay? And so if you have some sort of noise in your data, um, this can be due to really true noise, or it can be due to the fact that you have a very complicated model where you cannot fit all the details using your model, then this, uh, this large complexity serves as a, a source of what we call deterministic noise. Um, regardless of how we have it, if you have noise, you fit to the noise, right? And this is what we call overfitting. Okay, and this is clearly what we need to avoid, right? So usually there's a rule of thumb that the number of parameters should be linked to the number of samples that you have, right? And so fitting five parameters to five samples is clearly a bad idea, right? And so we are likely to have a much better out of sample performance using fewer parameters given the small of training, uh, amount of training data we have. Right? So overfitting is not a question of um, the model, but it's always a question of the model and the amount of training data that we have. Okay? So if you have a small data set, please don't try to fit a deep neural network to this because clearly you are running into the overfitting issue. Okay? So there is this question, how much data do I have? Which type of model do I select? So it's not a, a principled model selection approach, but it's more a general theme. You should tailor your model complexity to the data that you have and not necessarily to the complexity of the underlying data structure, right? If you don't have the data, don't go for these high dimensional models. Right? And to make this a bit more precise, what we can do is we can write what the overall error actually is. Okay, so the overall error is the out of sample performance, <clears throat> which is the in sample loss plus some additional term, right? So this is what we want to minimize. This is what we minimize in training. So this is our empirical loss. And this is what we call a generalization error, okay? So um, again, I would like to point you to this great book, Learning from Data by Abu Mostafa, which I will put the reference to in, in the description of this video. Um, what we can think of is, is this is our training problem and this is our model selection problem, if you wish, right? And so what this means is this is sort of the overfitting problem. If you pick a very powerful model, you will have a small empirical loss, but it's very clear that you fit a highly oscillating um, polynomial in this example. 
too noisy data, which can give you all sorts of trouble, right? So you see this goes down very strongly also here. So it's not very likely that this will have a good out of sample performance. <clears throat> so this one is what you train for. This one is what accounts for, let's say, the overfitting. You know? How bad is the difference between in-sample loss and out-of-sample loss? Okay. So what you can do is, or the, the rule of thumb that we have is um, for powerful models, and what do I mean by powerful? I mean that we have a large number of parameters Q. Okay. What we will find is that the loss goes down, but this generalization quantity goes up. for Q, right? If you have a lot of data, then this problem will go away, right? So let's say you had more data. Something like this maybe. Then you would click quickly find that fitting this uh, pink model would give you maybe something like this, okay? So you still have a, now you have a larger in-sample loss, clearly, but this generalization bound is sort of the overfitting problem. If you have too many degrees of freedom, you will generalize poorly. And so the, the other way around, so if you have a lot of data, so the n goes up, what you will find is that this omega goes down again. Okay. And so what we call this, um, and this is the second part of the title, this trade-off is known as the bias variance trade-off. So what do I mean by this? Um, if you take a simple model, let's say this blue line, you have a large bias because it is not possible to fit closely to your data set. Right? It simply is not possible. Your model is not strong enough. So you have induced a bias. Regardless of how you train it, you will always have a rather large loss. The variance is something else, right? If you pick a very high dimensional model, you can fit very nicely to, to your data. So you have a small in sample loss. But over multiple training runs, let's say you draw the samples once more from the same distribution, but you know, different noise now, you can have one time a very, very good model performance. Next time you can have a poor model performance, right? So many, many parameters means you have a large variance in your model, okay? So you have a small bias because you can in fact find the truth, but finding the truth is sort of a matter of luck because you have, you know, noise in your data and there's a huge variance over a large number of training runs. So low bias because you can't find the right model, large variance because you're very un, uh, it's unlikely to find it if you don't have enough data. And so again, um, this is in another framing, if you wish, of the overfitting problem, right? So again, this is a brief introduction. Um, you can find a lot more details in, in the literature that we are going to point you to. Just keep in mind, overfitting is what we need to avoid. Um, so this generalization error is something that usually has to be accounted for. There's a very powerful theory about this. You can you know, study what's called VC dimensions or of learning models. So how complicated is your model? And these VC dimensions will give you bounds on this generalization error, um, independence of, of your model complexity as well of your data. But in practice, we usually resort to techniques like regularization or cross-validation to, to make this small and, and make sure that we select a good model. And cross-validation is actually what we're going to discuss in detail in the next video. So thanks a lot for your attention and see you then.